Hi and welcome to Swedish Plant Guys. This is the third video in a series of three on water. The first one was why do we water? The second was when do we water? And this one is how do we water? So let's go. So there is a couple of things we need to know before we can start to water our plants. Number one is temperature. For indoor tropical plants, we recommend that you have a temperature that is in between 15 to 22 degrees Celsius, which is approximately 59 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That is usually a good temperature to water your plants with. Now, if you don't want to measure the water, you can always use room temperature water because that will always work perfectly. Number two is minerals in the water. Now, if you use tap water, depending on where you are in the world, you could have or usually you have chlorine or fluoride in the water. Here in Sweden, we have both of them. And that could be a problem for some species of plants. Now, most indoor tropical plants can handle a little bit of chlorine or fluoride in the water, but if you get problems with your plants, then you might have to use some other type of water or make sure to remove those minerals from the water. Now, one indication that you have too much minerals in the water is that you get the edges of the plants here start to turn yellow. Then quite rapidly they start to turn brown and you have in between that yellow and brown you have a line. We show that on this photo here so you can see it up close. If you start to get this on some of your plants you could have a mineral problem. Now the third thing is pH. Now, what does that mean? Well it means that your water can either be acidic, neutral or basic. Now you want to have a water that has a pH that's neutral. That means that it's within somewhere the range of six and a half to seven. If you don't have that, when you start to add fertilizer to your plants or nutrients to your plants, some of those nutrients will not be able to be absorbed by the plant. So when do we correct the pH? Well, it is only if you have problems. Problems with pH usually manifests by you, you're, you notice that your plants are overall weak. They're not as strong as they should be. They can have yellowing of the leaves, they can have browning of the leaves, but overall it's just weak. The roots aren't growing, you have stunted growth, something is wrong. Then it could be a pH problem and you have to rectify that problem. So what can you do if you know that you have a lot of minerals in the water? If your tap water is full of minerals, you see that you have a problem with your plants. There are three different ways of handling that. The first one is quite easy and this will only work depending on how your country is adding those minerals to the water. But generally speaking, this works all around the world. So what do you do? Well, this is called open air gas off. What that means is that you just take a bucket like this. You just take your tap water, pour it into the bucket. Then you just let this water sit in the bucket for at least one day but maybe two or three days. What will happen is that the gases here, the minerals that are in gas form, will actually start to air off from this water. And then you don't have that problem anymore. Now the second way of getting rid of those minerals in the water is to use a filter. Now the most cheapest filter is an active charcoal filter. It doesn't cost very much, at least not here in Sweden, and it's extremely effective. Now, what does that mean? Well, active charcoal means that the charcoal has been heated up ex to extremely high temperatures in the addition of a certain gas. What that means is that this charcoal has 
a huge surface area, meaning that that surface area of the charcoal can absorb and take away those minerals from the water. Now the third way is to use something called reverse osmosis. You can buy a filter machine that uses reverse osmosis to remove the toxins, remove the minerals in the water. What it basically does is when you push the water through that filter, it hinders some of the molecules to go through. It hinders certain ions to go through that. So what you end up with is pure water. Now, the downside to reverse osmosis is that it's quite expensive. So here is three different ways to water your plants properly. Number one, watering on top of the soil. So we have an aglonema here, which I can show you how to water this properly on top of the soil. Now, I'm only using this here to collect the excess water. So uh, I'm going to water on top of the soil here. Now, this is usually the most common way to water it any type of plant. It is usually the way I water my plants at home, uh, but there are downsides and there are upsides to this way of watering. <clears throat> so when you start to water your plants on top of the soil, we have to recommend that you use a pot that has drainage holes, meaning that it has holes in the bottom of the pot because you never ever want to have water standing in the bottom of the pot. This will quite effectively kill your plants. So you want to have a way to get away with that excess water and you will have excess water when you water this way. So you might have a plant that you've heard, well, it don't need that much water. It, it wants to dry up in between the watering and doesn't need that much water. So this is how not to do when you're watering your plants. It's quite often you know that, well, it doesn't need that much water. So I just water a little bit like this. Now, that amount of water is well, first up, it will only add a little bit of water to this side of the pot here. And that little water might not even reach the bottom of the pot here. And most of the roots will be in the bottom of the pot. No matter how you water, most of the roots will be down here. So when you water your plants, no matter what type of a plant it is, if you water on top of the soil, make sure you water enough so that you can see that the excess water goes out through the drainage holes in the bottom. Then you know that all of the roots in all of the pot has gotten water. So we do it like this. As you can see, a lot of the water is collecting on top of the soil and then eventually it starts to go through. And what happens now is that it goes through the drainage holes in the bottom. So now it's just a waiting game to make sure that all of this excess water goes out from the pot. So now you can place this back to where you had it before. So you do it like this on all types of plants. Now, like I said before, if you have a plant that you know, you've heard that it doesn't want that much water. For instance, the CC plant here. This is a plant that it can be bone dry and it's still alive. So when I water this plant, I do exactly the same thing. I make sure that all of the roots get some water. Then I wait and you wait until it's completely dry again before you water again. And if you have a plant that you know wants a lot of water or it needs to be a little bit moist at all times, then you do this a little bit more often, meaning you increase the frequency of how often you water, not the amount of water, the frequency. Now I want to add that this first way of watering, it works on all types of substrates, all types of mixtures. 
Now the second way of watering your plants is something called bottom watering. Now it's exactly what it sounds like. You use something, usually in your home you can use the sink in the kitchen. You can just fill the sink up with a couple of inches, maybe two or three inches of water that is somewhere in between five and seven and a half centimeters of water. And then you take your plant and place it in the sink like this. You take your plant here and you just place it into the sink like this. Now it's just a waiting game. You need to wait for it to stand there in the water for at least 30 minutes, but up to an hour. Now that is depending on what type of a soil or substrate you're using with your plants, because some substrates actually take a very long time to suck up that water. The capillary force within the soil is going to suck up water from the bottom to the top. And if you do this for just a couple of minutes, then take it away like this, then you will only have water in the bottom of the pot here. Now that is where you have most of the roots, but not all of them. So by placing them in the water and waiting at least 30 minutes up to an hour, what will happen is you will have moisture in almost all of the pot depending on what type of a soil or substrate you use. Now the big advantage of bottom watering is of course that you will know that after you have watered, you have moisture, you have um, water where most of the roots are. That is the upside to this. Now the downside here is that it's a little bit harder to know when to water again because if the top soil here never gets to be moist, then it's hard to know when to water again. So, which one is best for you? Watering from the top or bottom watering? Well, that's up to you to decide. Because both ways work and they have upside and downsides. Now, the third way of watering your plants is if you have a self-watering pot or a self-watering system or a self-watering container, whatever you choose to use. But what is a self-watering pot? Well, it usually works something like this. You have an outer pot like this, where you have no holes in the bottom. You have an inner pot like this, that has holes in the bottom where the excess water can escape and it will go down into the outer pot here. Then you also have some way for that water in the bottom here to go up to the inner pot. This way has a nylon rope here that is going to, through capillary force, the water is going to go up to the inner pot here. Usually you also have a water meter that just lets you know how much water you have left in the outer container here. But you also have a hole here. Now, what most people misses in this type of system here is that usually they water in the hole or they remove the inner pot and they water in the outside pot here. Because, like I said before, you have a way for the water to move from the outer pot to the inner pot through these nylon ropes here. However, we recommend you that if you use a self-watering system, you do not water in the hole here or you do not fill up the outer pot. You actually use the inner pot. So you water the plant on top of the soil or the substrate you use here. Just like in alternative number one, watering on top of the soil. Because then you know that all the roots will, at that time when you have watered, have gotten water. Now the excess water will go down into the outer pot here. And the water meter will let you know as soon as it gets filled up. And then you can wait until everything is dry again, until you water again. 
but you know that at least one time when you watered, all of the roots have gotten water because this nylon rope here might not be able to give water to all of the roots. Now I want to leave you with an extra tip. Now no, ma no matter if you're using number one, number two or number three, once a year or every two years, make sure to rinse through your entire system with water. What I mean by that is that there is a way to get rid of those excess minerals that you might have in your tap water or other toxins that can be in the soil because maybe you've fertilized too much or other toxins have gotten into your pot. Now you do that by just adding a lot of water. So you take your plant like this, you take it to the sink and then you just start to add water and you just keep on adding water, a lot of water. Because what happens here now, usually you do not water this much, but if you do this once a year or every two years, you water a lot. What happens is that with the water that is going out from the drainage holes in the bottom here, you're also removing toxins like salts and minerals. So you're getting them away from your system. By doing this, you're actually helping your plants to thrive. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps our channel a lot. If you haven't subscribed already, please do hit the bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram where you can get sneak previews on upcoming videos and sometimes a little bit more. Now, until next time, hi door.